Thank you. Merci. Very happy to be here. I have never been on stage before without these guys. <laughs> so today is no exception, although I have to put them down. These instruments are my lifetime partners, buddies, friends. So right there is the source of happiness and business for me. My name is Zhang Zhang. I'm from Beijing. I didn't invent anything cool or make any life-changing <laughs> discoveries, I'm afraid. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you my story and an idea. The story starts in China, in an old literati family. Here's a photo from 1908. The baby in the middle grew up to be my grandmother and a pioneer in creating welfare support for women and children during wartime China. Here's the family in around 1920, during a family wedding in our home in Beijing. Notice that none of the little girls had bound feet. They all had natural feet. And each and every one of them went to university or medical school and chose the men they wished to marry, which was still quite revolutionary at the time in China. By the time I was born, towards the end of the Cultural Revolution, my family had lost their home, their business, their material wealth, as in many similar families in China at the time. But they kept their dignity and courage, even when everyone was sent to labor camps to work in the fields, to be re-educated. My grandmother, the sociologist, spent three years in the south of China planting rice. Her husband, my grandfather, who graduated from Columbia University in New York, was sent to raise pigs, and apparently a very sophisticated metier, and cutting stones from a quarry, also for about three years. Just before my birth, they were allowed to come back to Beijing, and they had found their home occupied by the Red Guards. The only place available for them was their kitchen. So that's where we lived. I spent the first few months of my life with them because my mother was doing her time in another labor camp created for artists. My mother was an acclaimed film actress at the age of 14 and a professional classical pianist. Her films had millions of fans and her face was featured on giant billboards, magazines, and comic books. Here's a... Uh, <laughs> from 1958, I believe. She's the one in the green. She was 14 at the time. This is a poster from the time. My father at the time was also quite well-known. He was the principal violinist of Madame Mao's orchestra. His performance was often on the radio and television, though, of course, we didn't own a television. That's what we're told. Uh, here on the left, is my mother. She was about 20 at the time in a very popular Chinese war film. These were women prisoners, you know, sewing the flag of the right about to be established communist China. Um, so my father, he even performed from Nixon during the president's visit in China. So my parents had a lot of fans and large followings all over the country, but in those days, fame did not translate into material abundance. Even though my parents are very well known, we were very, very poor. We lived in a room that was nine square meters in a two-room flat. Another family lived in the other room. My little brother and I, we slept on a broken sofa. Uh, we didn't even have a table. There was no room, no table. So for mealtimes, we used the wooden piano bench of my mother's piano, you know, the bowl of rice on the little bench. So some of you may say, what, they don't have a, pia uh, they don't have a table, <laughs> they have a piano. Yes, life is a question of priorities. <laughs> so my education, musical education, began in that little room with no table. Uh, I started playing the piano at the age of two, and the violin at the age of four, yes. Uh, as you can see, I didn't look very happy, and I wasn't. The first years of playing the violin is rather tedious, repetitive work. At least it was to me. 
And the sounds that was coming out wasn't very nice either. So you can, this is proof that I was not enjoying myself. The only time, actually, I didn't have to play the violin every day was when my father was arrested and imprisoned by Madame Mao for having openly dis disagreed with her. I was actually with him when they came for him into our little room. Several men arrived, and my father went with them and didn't come home that night. Uh, but that might have been the end of my father, our family, and my career as a violinist. But when Madame Mao herself was suddenly relieved of her powers, definitively, my father was released, which of course was wonderful for our family. But it also meant I had to go back to the salt mines of practicing the violin every day, which was less wonderful. So those of you who have studied music will know what I mean when I mention the word intonation. Justesse, en français. Yinjun in Chinese, which literally means the accuracy of sound. So this really made my life miserable at the time. In Chinese, the word music is made out of two symbols, yin yue, sound and happiness. So I assume achieving the right sound will lead to happiness. In 1981, my parents received permission to leave China. This was just the beginning of the opening at the time. But they were told they must choose between their two children, as only one will be able to go with them. My little brother, who was six years old at the time, here we are right before our departure with our grandparents, my little brother was left behind because we couldn't go together. And that was the choice my parents had to make. Nothing could have made up of the lost time of not growing up together. But Leo eventually joined us after several years of separation and grew up to be a wonderful musician himself. Here you see him, a cellist, a singer with his own rock band. So all those lost years we could not have again of not being children together. But because we share our music together, we we're able to remain close with good understanding of each other. And that is thanks to the power of music. On April 1st, 2000, I was engaged by the L'Orchestre Philharmonique de Monte Carlo in the Principality of Monaco, one of the oldest orchestras in the world. I have never been to Monaco before, and as you can imagine, it is as different as can be from where I had come from. But Monaco is not just about the casinos, Formula One, super yachts, James Bond. There's a lot more to this place than meets the eye. One of the most important themes of Monaco is the culture and tradition of philanthropy. Most of the friends I've met in Monaco are involved with one or several charity organizations. And very soon, I also started to participate. In 2007, with the help and support of four friends, I created Jungle Music. Our mission was simple, good music for good causes. Creating musical concerts where 100% of the receipts are given to humanitarian or ecological projects in progress. Our first concert was in a small room on top of a museum of collectible dolls. Now, these were not Barbie dolls or Hello Kitties. Some of them were very old and valuable. But most of them reminded me of Chucky, you know, big eyes and rather sinister. <laughs> but it was the only space we could have for free. So our first Jungle Music concert, we made exactly 800 euros, collected at the entrance by my friend Kay, who had a little metal box and some change in her bag. So people came, they put money in the box, came into the concert. The next day, Kay took the 800 euros and drove to Nice where she gave the money to a retirement home run by the little sisters of the poor, les petits sœurs de pauvres. This retirement home consisted of residents, mainly elderly ladies who were alone in the world without sufficient means to support themselves in their old age. The 800 euros was used to purchase microwave ovens for the individual room, so these old ladies could be, warm up their soup, coffee or tea in the comfort of their own room between meals. It does not sound very grandiose, 
But to those individual old ladies, their daily lives had become a little more convenient, and that to us was a very important and worthy cause. After a few more concerts at the Doll Museum, we felt encouraged, and we wanted to create more concerts and bigger venues, preferably real concert halls, both for artistic reasons and in order to generate more attendance to help the cause. But we were faced with the practical fact that venues cost money, and musicians also needed to make a living. And cannot systematically give up paid concerts to perform for free, even if they are very eager to offer their time and talent to help. Knocking on the doors of private banks and enterprises was new and intimidating to me in the beginning. You see, in music schools and conservatories, they don't train us in the art of marketing or fundraising. And I think these are very important skills for today's musician to have, actually. So. Once we started knocking on those doors, however, very quickly, we've discovered that many industries and individuals are willing to take part in supporting valid projects which combines artistic excellence and concrete humanitarian work. Soon, we were able to generate the necessary sponsorship needed for bigger events, raising more funding for more projects. Since 2007, our concerts have found a various. Concrete projects around the world, including building a school for girls in Afghanistan, freshwater wells and reservoir in Africa, helped rescue injured turtles in the Mediterranean. Most of them are injured by eating plastic, so please be very careful when you go to the beach. These will hurt the animals. And we also participate in rebuilding roofs and schools in Japan and the Philippines. After the devastation of the recent natural disasters, and our latest concert participated in helping women war victims in the Congo to reconstruct their lives. No help is too insignificant. Back in that nine square meter room in Beijing, my parents' combined salary at the time was less than ten dollars a month. One more dollar. Would have made a big difference to our lives then. If we are able to change the destiny of an individual, be it a human being, an animal, or even a tree, we would have made a world of difference to that individual. Look at this violin. It is now 127 years old, and once upon a time, it was living as a tree. <laughs> Save the trees. <laughs> Through jungle music, gradually I realized we have created a functioning micro model, which produces concrete results on a regular basis. We have turned a traditional two-way relationship between the performer and the audience into a four-way partnership. The sponsor, who supports the logistical costs of the concert, the performer, who share their art, you, the audience, whose tickets will go into helping a concrete humanitarian or ecological project in progress, and the charity organizations who will have a chance to generate not only funding but also awareness for their cause to the greater public. Now, some of you. Or some of my friends might say, "Well, why should I pay 20 euros to see the local symphony or to see you play when I could, at home, access the best concerts live from Berlin, from Vienna, from New York, and for free?" Now, maybe I say, "Well, what if I told you that 20 euros that you're going to pay to buy a ticket to see me play or see some your local orchestra play will go in to help?" Someone and change their lives. A child to pay their school fees for a year, or for someone to have access to fresh water. Would you still stay at home, or would you come to the concert? So this is also our way to share our music to bring in more audience. Music is a unifying energy. We can bring people together. Those who can help and those who need help. The concert stage is a natural platform to communicate ideas, emotions, information, and inspiration, as we've been doing here. 
gives those who are in need a stage to present their cause to the greater public, gives those who want to help a concrete project to work with. We can turn our business into a tremendous source of happiness, not just for ourselves or those who love music, but also for the expansion of a greater well-being for humanity and for our planet, one tree at a time. Music is a universal language shared by all of us. It is also a powerful instrument for positive change. My goal is to turn the meeker idea of jungle music into a global movement. Together, we can help. Ensemble, nous sommes meilleurs. Thank you.